Yeah, dear guests, thank you for coming and being here and also to the ones who are sitting at home or in the office watching this interesting panel and part of the Blue Innovation Doc. I would like you to welcome a friend in the meantime of Bo Düsseldorf and a big supporter of the issues of the industry of the water sport and boating industry in Europe, Dr. Commissioner Dr. Johannes Hahn who will be speak in a minute. But before that, I would like to tell you how important it is for us that a high representative from Brussels is here because this shows how serious the international boating and water sport industry is. And the added value for the economy of each country is something which we all, especially our politicians, should take into consideration because thousands of families are making a living out of that, that's one point, but thousands of families are making a living because boaters, water sport people are using their equipment and having a touristic part for years, and that is creating also a high value, a high income for regions and also for structurally weak regions who would not survive without that water sport industry and boating people who are going to several coasts and islands. Welcome, Commissioner Dr. Johannes Hahn. It's a great pleasure having you here. It's an honor, and thank you for being with us today. Please. Yeah, thank you, Petros. Uh, not only for the invitation, but also for the very friendly introduction. And indeed, um, it's a great pleasure for me to be here, uh, not only as a speaker, but also like I do it for several decades, visiting the boat, uh, like many of you, as a, as a start of the year. I just said to somebody, uh, probably it's the best possible uh, date, because it's a couple of months after the end of the last season, and it's already ahead of the next one. So we are all already very, very keen uh, to be again on our boats. I am my own uh, sailor for many years. And so I was, uh, it was, a, a, again, a, a great pleasure and uh, honor to be today with you and using the opportunity to tell you a little bit uh, about, uh, indeed, the ideas and the possibilities we have at the European level to support uh, the boat industry, because uh, I think one can say uh, navigating a boat has a lot uh, in common with politics. Uh, discover good politics, I would say. Discovering new shores, using winds and weather uh, to our advantage and embracing the challenges of unknown waters as an opportunity. Christopher Columbus already once said, uh, you can never cross the ocean until you save the courage to lose sight of the shore. This drives us forward. The boating sector and us, the European Commission, we need to set uh, the course for a better and more sustainable future. And therefore, we sometimes need to explore new opportunities. And may I say, at this point, I'm happy to hear that uh, the boat Düsseldorf is already almost back to the number of visitors and uh, exhibitors uh, than it was before COVID. This is not uh, something, um, uh, let's say, obvious and uh, guaranteed, but it's the result of um, a lot of enthusiasm by the organizers, but also engagement by those who are there as visitors or as exhibitors. And this is why I think it's um, great to hear that uh, we all back in Düsseldorf. Coming back to our challenges we are facing, um, in particular after the pandemia, but in the midst of a war, and unfortunately, I believe this war will not go away uh, very fast, but this is another issue. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Europe has the task, the challenge, the obligation to move to the future. For example, <clears throat> what concerns uh, our topic of today, uh, a joint initiative of the Euro European Commission and the European Investment Fund. Our Blue Invest initiative uh, rightly 
as a central point of the discussion of today as a platform and accelerator. It fosters innovation and investments in sustainable technologies for the blue economy. We will use it uh, to support, in particular, smaller businesses uh, that have transformative ideas uh, but a hard time accessing uh, private funding, a special issue in particular in Europe where venture capital is not so available than for us in the US. In the US, 80% of private companies are financed by private investors. In Europe, 80% of private companies or companies are financed by banks and banks by definition are risk averse and this is why we face a lot of um, difficulties really to to promote, to push um, startups initiatives. And this is where we try to come in. Uh, and uh, this is why Blue Invest offers customized support, uh, advice and visibility to indeed innovative SMEs and startups in the blue economy. And on the other hand, it provides access to investors and contributes to a dedicated financial ecosystem for blue tech SMEs. So far, Blue Invest has managed to create a number, to create a community, bringing together more than 1,000 uh, blue economy entrepreneurs, <coughs> provide investment uh, readiness uh, uh, for around uh, 200 SMEs already, and facilitate company investor matchmaking through so far 40 events and uh, 3,400 B2B meetings. Having startup pitches here this morning illustrates uh, Europe uh, innovative potential. We will try to match this uh, with Blue Invest. And I would like to use this opportunity to call on you to use the Blue Invest uh, fund. And I understand later on you will receive a presentation about the details. But already on a more general note, I can say This uh, Blue Invest uh, Fund is uh, backed by the European Strategic Investment Fund. It enables us to invest up to 300 million euro into a sustainable blue economy. An additional equity initiative, which is called Invest EU Blue Economy, will result in 1.5 billion uh, of euro of EU funds for financial intermediaries investing in this sector meaning uh, banks, other financial institutions in order to provide the necessary financial means. <clears throat> Investing in blue economy has a positive impact far beyond the sector. Whatever is invented for sale and motorboats, from uh, weather instruments to solar plates and recyclable building materials, often becomes a space and energy saving solution in other fields. Europe is a global leader in high-tech, advanced maritime equipment and systems, ranging from safety systems to cargo handling and electronics. So we need to work together to keep it uh, indeed like this, in particular while facing an increased global competition. On the boat, just like uh, in politics, we always need to see the bigger picture. Therefore. I would like to have a look with you at the nautical chart for the green transition. Blue Invest is part of our blue economy strategy. It includes developing the European Union's highly advanced manufacturing and technological capabilities, pursuing the objective of zero emission boards as well as developing green infrastructure in coastal areas. Preserving landscapes and coastal resilience is part of the mindful form of tourism many of us live while boating. In this context, I would like to mention how important it is to combine blue skills with uh, green awareness. The project the European Boating Industry launched together with its partners to develop the first ever environmental qualification for the nautical tourism sector is a good example. The curricula will respond to targets set by the European Green Deal 
and the UN Sustainable Development Goals. It aims to sustainably manage recreational boating and nautical tourism to become a means to protect marine and coastal ecosystems. <clears throat> I'm glad the European boating industry supports ambitious climate goals with its latest strategy because the Green Deal requires working hand in hand like on a sailboat. This is very important. Let's wait. Well, coming back to the Green Deal, I think it's uh, even more important as it is not an end in itself. Russia's war against Ukraine, and uh, I cannot uh, shy away to mention this, proved that we set the right course by investing in the green transition <coughs> and, in particular, renewable energy. We not only save our planet, oceans, and uh, boating landscapes, but we will also gain, finally, of course, we are not yet there, but finally, cheaper, cleaner, and safer energy. At the same time, we strengthen Europe energy independence and therefore reduce our political and economic uh, vulnerability. Of course, the green transition is also a business opportunity. Our green investments serve as a growth strategy, meeting the certainly ambitious 2030 climate and energy targets can add 1% to GDP and create almost 1 million new green jobs. To achieve the goals set by the European Green Deal, almost one-third, precisely 30% of our long-term budget and the Union's recovery instrument, uh, what we call rightly so Next Generation EU, has been allocated for green investments. We are talking here about 250 to 300 uh, uh, billion euro till the end of 2026. So by investing almost 40% under the recovery and resilience facility in climate objectives, we turned the pandemic into an opportunity to invest in the future. Decisions in politics are, like on a boat, based on anticipating the challenges ahead. That means facing the greatest industrial transformation of our times, we need to set sail Europe to lead. As first movers, we can inspire others and set global standards. Also, in this ecosystem, in this uh, um, uh, economic sector, the blue economy, we should be first movers and not first or second followers. So to go ahead um, of this competition, we will keep working on strengthening our industrial base and uh, making Europe more investment and indeed innovation friendly. Also, I have to say already today, Europe with currently around 6% of global uh, um, uh, population counts for around 20% of global innovative uh, outcomes. But of course, we are under stress. This is something where we face more and more global challenges and we have to wreck this. Is. And uh, therefore, we are looking uh, very much uh, and with a lot of concern to the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. While we are working with our partner to find solutions, we also need to enable our clean tech industry, in particular as we see aggressive attempts to attract our industrial capacities away to China, the U.S. or elsewhere. We have a compelling need to make this net zero transition without creating uh, new dependencies. That's why the European Commission will present a Green Deal industrial plan aiming at a more favorable regulatory environment and better access to finance. At the same time, we will focus on skills and trades. And I have to say, Europe is the by far most internationalized continent of all the five, or you can include the Arctic, six continents in the world. And this means we are very much depending 
on free trade, but on the other hand, if our partners, our competitors are more protectionistic, we have to react and we will see to which extent we can find solutions, of course, in partnership and cooperation, but if needed, we also have to take the necessary measures. But again, our interest should be to preserve free trade around the globe. But uh, drawing lessons from our energy situation, we also need to strengthen our independence and thus widen our network of strategic partnership. This is an urgent matter, a matter again of preserving Europe's ability to act, a matter indeed what we call Europe aut um, autonomy. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uniting the power of 27 member states is now in our hands to create the jobs of tomorrow, develop uh, and retain talent in Europe and strengthen European companies. This is why we have dedicated 2023 the year of skills, because what we need is also skilled labor workforce. Between 2020 and 2025, we will lose in Europe 3.5 million uh, workers. Until 2050, most likely up to 35 million workers. This is the reason why, although we are facing some economic uh, challenges, nevertheless, the labor market is in a better situation than ever. But nevertheless, and I suppose some of you or many of you are facing these challenges, uh, the, the lack of skilled labor workforce. And this is also something we have to see and we have to react and we have to find the right um, uh, approaches. That's why despite the troubled waters, the pandemic and the war against uh, Ukraine with all its impact, we will keep our green course with success finally and thus proved the old Latin thinker and writer Seneca Wright who once said if one does not know to which port one is sailing, no wind is favorable. Fortunately, we know very well what is our destination. Our compass clearly shows that we are sailing in the right direction towards a, a brighter future, towards a greener blue economy, towards a greener and more innovative uh, Europe. And finally, I wish you all the best, in particular for your business, for our joint future, and in particular for the next, for the incoming uh, sailing season. Thank you very much.